5 Good Practices for Efficient Technique Development. My name is Suelio Almeida and today I want to discuss some tips about good practices that will benefit your technique both on the short and long term. Try as much as possible to adapt slightly these tips to fit your routine and availability to practice and make adjustments if necessary. They are incredibly flexible. 1. Avoid blind laps. Always know what you're practicing. When you don't know what to work on and you keep repeating whatever you are doing, expecting improvement, you may even get a little bit extra precision here and there, but it's not going to be efficient. More than that, it can be dangerous to your long-term technique. Why is that? Because our muscular memory is dumb. When we repeat something, we're slowly teaching our body to do that on its own. And if this something is actually bad, we are literally teaching our body how to do bad things automatically. Bad habits are created when you repeat something bad and you're not aware of it. When we drive, we do a thousand different things and each of them is susceptible to bad habits. It could be a posture thing. It could be a braking problem. It could be vision. Yes, you can create bad habits even with your eyes. It could be how tightly you grip your steering wheel. When we practice the right things, we are going to the right direction. When we practice wrong, we're literally going further away to where we want to arrive. At any point in our practice when we're driving, the key is to be aware of what you're doing. If you're aware, even if it's a mistake, if you are aware of that mistake, eventually you will be kind of, okay, I need to change that because I know this is a problem. So just knowing this is a problem, already subconsciously makes you uh, progressively change that. You don't have to actively be changing everything all the time. You just need to be aware of what you're doing. Awareness is the key. If you're driving and you don't know what you are doing wrong, that's the dangerous part. So be aware. That's what I do all the time. When I'm not aware, I ask people, hey, like, check out my driving. Uh, let's compare telemetry. Let's see what's what's going on here because I don't know exactly where to find the time. So that's where you should start looking for uh, the bad habits um, or looking for improvement points. So at some point, you will eventually have to just drive more and more to find it. But just make sure it's not a blind driving. It's You're trying things. Sometimes it's breaking a little bit more on a straight line. I always like testing things especially in the simulator where of course you can crash you can do whatever you want with the car without any damage any money damage so brake harder sometimes you're, you might you might be breaking 75 percent and you can break 85 percent and you don't you're not noticing it and that that's taking a tenth from your braking zone or maybe you're releasing the brakes a little bit too fast and under steering you can maybe test braking a little bit harder you need to try different things um because if you're trying the same thing, expecting the car to behave differently, it's not going to happen. And that's insane. Number two, compare, compare, compare. Teammates, friends, a coach, your fellow league competitors, your rivals, whatever. Just ask them to drive with you. Do a similar amount of laps. Chat a bit about what they think about each corner. Compare telemetry. Ask them to watch your lap. Any external opinion will expand your technique vocabulary. And this way, you can find out extraordinary things that you may be doing or not doing while driving. Sometimes it can be just the way you're setting up your simulator, the position of the seat and the pedals or the wheel, or a software setting that may not be properly set. These little details can be picked up by someone else very quickly if you allow it to happen. My best improvements have all 100% been while practicing with other drivers. I don't recall improving massively or having epiphanies while practicing alone. It's all about practicing with others, chasing that lap time to the last hundredth, and then discuss about it and exchange the experiences and thought processes with others. I can say that it is definitely uncomfortable to chase faster drivers and you have to really want to improve, to expose yourself to this vulnerability of being slower. Because most people will find more comfortable to drive in a race where you are already the fastest and you can just brag that you are faster than those guys. The thing is, though, if you really want to improve, you have to expose yourself and race against the guys who are faster than you. And that is not going to feel good. It's not supposed to feel good. 
Niki Lauda said, you only learn when you lose. Winners don't learn anything most of the time. You have to lose to be frustrated and to feel that psychological pain of being a loser to finally get that motivation to look for improvements more aggressively. If you win, you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, ha, huh, I'm a winner, and you don't feel like, you don't feel that, 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 that thing, that itching, you know, um, that you need to practice more. When you want to compare against other drivers, look for the fast ones, look for the ones that are actually going to make you feel uncomfortable. I know you feel just like I feel when we go to a race lobby and we find that that freaking fast guy is there. It feels terrible. Oh no, that guy is there. I'm not going to win the race. But that's opportunity for you to compare with him and to see what he's doing so you can improve. That's opportunity. Try to convert that feeling with something that will actually help you improve later. Three exercise yep this one is annoying i know everyone talks about it but the benefits of exercising in this sport are just too many for us to ignore it you can run swim ride a bike these can give you a boost in mood and your mind will actually be more prepared to focus for a long stand for example in the package you can get a good nutrition and drinking lots of water of course i've had the habit of swimming the day before an important race for example and I would visualize the entire lap thinking about as much detail as possible, like curbs, elevation changes, bumps, etc. All that in my mind while swimming. This is the visualization realm already, so I won't go too much into detail about that. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. Four, do leagues and championships. This comes alongside the second tip where you compare with other drivers. In leagues, you have a deadline. The date of the race you get to know your rivals there's other people watching when it's broadcasted it creates a much more immersive experience of the sport the biggest benefits rivals rivals are the strongest motivation for us to ask ourselves how we can improve more quickly than them before the next race again i strongly recommend doing leagues with other people like a team so you can benefit from both the friends and the competitors giving you the context that you need. My biggest improvements ever have been with leagues. I remember starting a league with around 3,000 I rating and finishing it with more than 5,000 I rating over the course of some few months. Just because I was so focused on using the official races as a preparation for the actual league. I had a schedule, I wanted to practice because I knew my rivals were doing the same. One of the beauties of leagues is that you see everyone improving together. Like on the beginning, I remember being 2000 I rating when joining a league with the MX-5 and I racing some years ago. And my rivals were 2 or 3k I rating and we were going up progressively over the course of the season, which is around 3 months. And we would end the league with 3 or 3.5k I rating, which is amazing. Everyone is improving together and trying to improve faster than the others. This is pretty much how I grew my I rating, doing official races, trying to gain knowledge, trying to just improve as much and as faster as I could before the next league race. Five, try to spread your practice as evenly as possible through the week. Practicing seven hours straight is gonna be much less productive than practicing one hour a day over the course of a week. The reason? Our brain needs to process that information through sleep. The more we break up our practice, the more sleep in between each session, and like this our brain will always pick up a lot more stuff. We're always the most productive before the 3 hour mark of practice. After that we get diminishing returns and it can be less and less effective. If you cannot spread your practice like that, try to at least have breaks in between extremely long sessions. Watch your teammate do a stint. Read something about technique. A break is not as great as a fall sleep, but it will help your brain recharge a little bit before the next big chunk of practice. If you like this kind of content, let me know. Leave a comment, subscribe, and like this so I can know what to focus on in the future. Thank you. Bye.